All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, this is our second installment of the Student Business Office's Tuition Tuesdays. We've got just over 20 attendees present today, so welcome, everyone. Um, I want to let everyone know that we are recording this presentation and the recording will be made available for viewing if you need to refer back to anything we go over today. It's going to be posted to the SBO, the Student Business Office's website. Um, throughout our presentation, we will post some key bits of information in the chat, so please make sure to take a look at that. Um, Taylor is just going to go ahead and post our website address there. That's where, again, you'll be able to see this recording later um, this week. <clears throat> My name is Karen Yackley, and I'm the Assistant Director of the Student Business Office. With me today is Taylor. Taylor, would you like to introduce yourself to our attendees? Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Robertson, and I'm a student employee here at the Student Business Office. Thank you. <clears throat> so our goal today is to take about 20 to 30 minutes to introduce you to Western's payment plan and to go over some of the basics about the student business office. Feel free to use the Q&A feature uh, to submit questions throughout the presentation and we'll go over those when we're all done showing you some slides that we have prepared about the Western's payment plan. Taylor is also going to share our email address in the chat, sbo at www.edu. Um, that is the most efficient way to reach one of our specialists. So even after this presentation, if something comes to mind, you've got some questions or some concerns, just send us an email and one of our specialists will get back to you very quickly. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna stop my video so that you can kind of focus on the slides and the words that we're, we're sharing today. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So first off, uh, we hope you are taking advantage of other live events that Western is offering throughout the summer. I want to take a moment to highlight some of the opportunities that you can connect with the Student Business Office over the next two months. On August 3rd, Rachel Farwell, our billing supervisor, will be talking about avoiding uh, how to avoid late fees and interest. On August 17th, Allison Frank, one of our billing specialists, will be discussing refunds, what they are and how to access them efficiently. And then finally, on September 7th, Matt Yocum, another one of our billing specialists, will be discussing our checklist for success. Uh, Matt's going to talk about some steps that you can take early to ensure that your Western account online is set for fall quarter. Our events all occur on Tuesdays at 10 a.m., so please join us. And if you do miss any of these, again, the recording will be available at our webpage. The Student Business Office, SBO for short, is Western's one stop for all past, present, and future students. We do it all. We provide a number of services from taking payments for charges on your student account, preparing a monthly statement of your account, helping former students navigate past due balances, assisting students with their commute options, getting your Western ID card and or your source for all tickets to Western sporting events and shows. SBO is available Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 p.m. Again, you can send us an email at sbo at www.edu 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we will respond within 48 hours. You can visit our website today for several how-to videos on a variety of topics. While you're there, if you have a student account question that you think might require a little extra digging, uh, feel free to schedule an appointment through our virtual scheduler, which is right on our homepage. Let's get into the details of Western's payment plan. So what is it? 
Western offers one payment plan for our currently enrolled students. It's offered every quarter and it allows students to spread their charges out over three installments. It's a great way to potentially avoid having to borrow student loans or having to figure out how to pay tuition in one lump sum. <clears throat> so who can enroll? Any student attending Western Washington University is eligible to participate in a plan. However, if you do have a balance, um, if you have a balance due for a prior quarter, you will be restricted from enrolling until that past due obligation is satisfied. If you fall into that category at any time, please contact our office. We do wanna work with you and ensure that that past due balance gets paid and also allow you to register for that payment plan. When can you enroll? Students can enroll only during the open enrollment period. That generally is a two week period and begins a week before the quarter starts and ends about a week after classes start. Um, you can visit our website for the specific dates for fall quarter. We have set those up for September 15th and it closes on September 29th. Uh, we will post those dates each quarter about a month before the quarter starts. So please um, visit our website, set a reminder, because that is the only period that you can register for classes. Or excuse me, the only period that you can register for the payment plan. Um, the reason we pick this period of time is because the way things kind of work as far as charges go is that you'll see tuition and fee charges posted to your account as you register for classes. And then um, these particular charges for fall quarter will show up on your September 1st statement. If you are also living in the dorms or using a meal plan, those charges appear a little bit later. It's about mid-September. So Again, based on that open enrollment period, we're figuring around September 20th, right when classes start on September 22nd, you should have your charges pretty close to final. Um, the only thing that might change is if you adjust your schedule, which potentially changes your tuition charges, or maybe you increase or decrease your meal plan, that could change your balance as well. So. Um, pretty close to final around the start of the quarter, and that, that is why we choose those dates for your open enrollment period. So how do you sign up? You can sign up through your Western account online, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. I'm going to show you what a Western account online looks like. Uh, when you log into your Western account online, which you use your universal login and password to get on there, you should see an option during the open enrollment period to sign up for a payment plan. Your Western account online is the place where your charges are posted, any payments are posted, you can view statements. Um, we will, the student business office will post those statements, we'll make them available around the first of every month. And it includes all the activity that occurs on your account for the 30 days prior to that statement date. Uh, it's important to understand that there is a $35 enrollment fee when you enroll for a payment plan, that's each quarter. So that's part of that upfront cost. The other thing is that you need to be prepared to pay your first installment upon enrollment. So an example, let's say your fall quarter balance is $3,000. You will register for that payment plan. You're going to pay that $35 up front, and you need to be prepared to pay $1,000 as well. That would be your first installment because that $3,000 is split over three even installments. 
So we were talking about the Western account online. This is what it looks like. You log in using your universal login information. And you can see on the left, there's that navigation pane where you can look at your activity details. You can sign up for auto payment. You can select to enroll in a payment plan. Uh, you can also make a payment, view your transactions and statements. Um, this is also where you could, as a student, give somebody access to your account. You can sign them up as what we call an authorized payer, and that would give them access to those statements. It would give them access to make a payment on your behalf. Um, that's right within this Western Account Online portal. Again, it's called authorized payer. Make sure that you're, you're setting that up if you have somebody that you want to allow access. <clears throat> I do want to just reiterate that if you, you know, you're logging in here, it's September 20th, it's September 22nd, maybe the first day of classes, and you're ready to register for that payment plan, and you click on the payment plan option and it says no payment plans allowed, please make sure to reach out to our office if there's anything that's preventing you from, from registering, because if you wait and that enrollment period has closed, we can't open it back up for you. So do get in touch with our office if things aren't working out the way that we're discussing in this particular um, presentation today. Here's another view. This is an example of when you're going, you click on that payment plan, it's gonna, it's gonna display, okay, your balance in this example is $4,164.60. You can see that $35 enrollment fee right in the center. And then that first installment, it takes that $4,000 balance, it divides it into three. Today, if you were registering for this plan, you'd be paying $1,388.20. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like. And then it'll show you when those future installments are due. All right, <clears throat> so when are installments due? Again, the first installment is due upon enrollment. The second installment is generally due about 30 days after the enrollment period opens. I say generally because it is a, it's a, it's a two week period of time. So if you're registering right when that, that enrollment plan um, opens, you might have a little bit longer than 30 days. If you're registering on the very last date of that open enrollment period, it's, it's right around 30 days that you're going to have uh, the, the second installment due. And then the third and final installment is due 30 days after your second installment. We highly recommend setting up automatic payments so you don't have to think about those dates. Uh, that's an option right when you're signing up for that payment plan. It'll present itself to you. Um, it's a great way to just kind of forget about it. Um, and we'll talk about some of those preferred payment methods coming up here in a little bit. So the next several slides are kind of the what ifs, the questions that we've received from students. What if I have financial aid? Um, we hope that all students are filing a free application for federal student aid. That's called FAFSA for short. If you have any questions about financial aid, uh, please contact Western's financial aid office to discuss those questions. You can still take advantage of a payment plan, even if you're receiving financial aid, especially if your financial aid is not going to cover everything. So you want to kind of work out your budget and see, all right, maybe I have a thousand dollar grant that's going to cover a, a small portion of what I owe, but maybe you need to sign up for a payment plan for the rest of the charges. Financial aid will begin dispersing to Western accounts the Friday before classes start for fall quarter. This is September 17th. And that's pretty standard for every quarter. It's about the Friday before classes start. So you could wait and see your financial aid apply to your charges and then, okay, what's left over to pay and sign up for a payment plan for the rest of it. The way the plan will work is it'll take into account any of that financial aid or scholarships that have applied to your balance and then it'll, the difference would be what you would enroll um, as part of your payment plan. Let's say you're anticipating financial aid, but there's some kind of delay, but you don't want to miss that open enrollment period um, for the payment plan. You can sign up for the payment plan, 
work through those you know, documents or with financial aid to get that financial aid applied to your account for fall quarter. And then your future installments will get adjusted. So let's say your $1,000 grant applies in October, those future installments will be reduced by that, that uh, grant that you received. So again, don't miss that open enrollment period um, just because your financial aid is delayed. <clears throat> Our second what if question is, what if I adjust my class schedule after the quarter starts? So let's say you're really on top of things. You've registered for the payment plan on September 15th, and then you receive a notice from the registrar's office that that class you were waitlisted for, there's a spot for you, that's great. But maybe that additional class added another charge to your account. When you are on a payment plan and there's additional charges that come through during the quarter, you will have the ability to acknowledge those additional charges and agree or disagree to allow those charges to be added to future installments. So it will just increase those future installments, but you have to acknowledge it. It's not going to happen automatically. Another situation could be maybe you your class schedule is all set, your meal plans all set, but then you go to the bookstore and you charge $300 in books. That's another thing you can acknowledge that additional charge and have those future installments adjusted. Um, another situation might be you have started the quarter, you're enrolled in a payment plan, and then you decide to reduce your meal plan and so your charges are reduced. That's great your future install installments will automatically adjust to account for that reduction in your balance. Here's our <clears throat> third what if. What if I miss my installment due date? I didn't take advantage of auto pay and I, I forgot that the second installment was due. Well, a $10 fee will be charged to your account, not your student account, but on your um, payment plan if the installment is 15 calendar days late. You could be dropped from a plan if you have more than one late installment, in which case your balance would be due immediately. So again, uh, we really highly recommend setting up auto pay. All right, so got through those what ifs, we got through some of the dates of the en open enrollment period for the payment plan. Let's talk about payment methods. This again is a view from the Western account online. When you go to make a payment, you're gonna have these payment methods presented to you. New credit or debit card. Sounds like a really easy way to pay. You just pull out your card, you plug in the numbers. But the one thing to understand with that this payment method is that there is a 2.75% convenience fee associated with it. So um, please be careful, or, or not careful, but we, we just don't recommend using that as, an, as a payment method because um, another method, which is the new bank account, that's actually free. And I think Taylor's going to talk a little bit about um, the e-check method and, and new bank account and what some really important things to consider with that. Taylor? Hi, yeah. So um, just going over our e-check, um, as a student, it is the best way to um, pay on your student account online as you can really pay for your tuition anywhere. Um, so say, oh, like you're at the mall with your friends and you're like, oh, shoot, I forgot that tuition is like due um, pretty soon. You can literally um, go ahead and add um, if you've already done it um, by like a click of a few buttons, you can go ahead and pay your tuition. Um, and I highly recommend saving your account. Um, so with the e-check, you just need your routing number and your bank account number, and you're able to go ahead and pay your tuition that way. Um, if you do pay by debit or credit card, it is a 2.75% interest fee. Um, so if you don't want to pay the interest fee, um, I highly recommend doing the e-check. Um, it's way easier um, and a little bit faster. So you don't have to go wait in line um, while like waiting to pay for your tuition. Um, you don't have to come in the office at all. So that's my that's my way um, of doing that. Thanks, Taylor. 
So this is an example of if you were to, to select a new bank account, it's essentially an e-check. And uh, so Taylor was talking about how easy and convenient that is. It's really key to make sure that you have the correct routing transit number and bank account number. I have another slide in, in a couple that I'm going to pull up uh, that sort of highlights where to get that information. Um, if you do plug in the wrong information there, you could be subject to um, fees associated with like being unable to locate that account. You want to make sure you've got enough money in there if you're setting up auto pay so that we don't have an insufficient funds charge associated with it. Um, but this is really, it's free and it's, it's quick and it posts immediately. So consider using the, the e-check. And as Taylor was saying, you can down below here at the bottom, it says save bank account for future use. You can check that box so that that's the method that comes up as the option to pay uh, the next time you visit your Western account online to make a payment. <clears throat> So just kind of going over again, the, the different payment method um, options that you do have, we really highly encourage online payment, either through e-check or credit debit card. I'm gonna just pull up this next slide here to show you for e-check, um, you can pull that routing number and account number off a check, which I understand a lot of people don't use checks. This may not even look familiar to some of our students that are gonna be starting this fall, but that's technically where that information comes from. Uh, you can also find this if you have a, a mobile app with your, your banking information, you can find that from your mobile app or call your uh, bank account and confirm the routing number and account number so that when you're plugging that information on into your Western account online, you have it accurate um, and then you're gonna avoid any of those fees associated with plugging that information in incorrectly. And then back to the methods of payment. Again, we do not recommend the credit and debit card. We do accept it, but just note that you will be charged 2.75% convenience fee. Um, we have a lot of families that use GET and 529 plans, which are prepaid tuition plans. That is another option um, to pay your, your tuition charges. And then we did discuss this earlier. Um, financial aid does apply to your Western account online. So when you pull up that Western account online, you should see there's my financial aid. It, it, it's paid to my account. It paid towards my tuition or my housing charges. Um, the way financial aid is set up is that it can only pay for tuition, mandatory student fees, and your housing or meal plans that you contract with the university. Anything outside of that, you actually have to complete an authorization to apply financial aid funds form. Uh, Taylor is going to share that link to that form in the chat. Uh, I do encourage you to complete that. So if you were to go to the bookstore and charge a book, um, your financial aid can can pay for it. Another example would be using the, the health center. Um, if a charge goes on your account, financial aid can't pay for that health center fee unless you uh, complete this form. And this is part of our checklist for success, um, excuse me, webinar that we're having in September. So I do encourage you to go to that. Matt will talk a little bit more about the, the important forms that should be completed. So when are charges due? Let's say after all this, discuss the payment plan, you decide it's not for me. I don't want to sign up for it. I'm just going to pay. It's important for you to understand that charges are due on the first day of the quarter. So um, that is September 22nd for fall quarter. It is January 4th for winter quarter and March 29th for spring quarter. That is when tuition mandatory student fees, housing meal plans are due first day of the quarter. Um, charges are technically considered late if they're not paid by then. We do have a little bit of a grace period built in and late fees will be assessed and accounts with past due balances at the close of business on the 15th. So again, these are the dates that you need to follow if you're not gonna sign up for a payment plan. If you do sign up for a payment plan, you pay that first installment right up front your second installment for fall quarter is going to be around due around October 29th, and your third and final installment will be due around uh, November 29th. I know I threw out a lot of dates there. If you have any questions, please um, 
reach out to our office. Here is our contact information for you, our email address, our phone number, our website. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my video. I'll leave up, leave up our contact information, but I'm going to start our video here. And then let's go over, um, do we have any questions in the Q&A, Taylor? Yes, we have a couple of questions. So the first question, I think this is pertaining to the uh, payment plan. Um, do you have, uh, oops, sorry, do you have to enroll every quarter? Yes. You do have to enroll every quarter for the payment plan. The payment plan is only good for, if you're gonna do the fall one, you register um, September 15th to 29th. It's for fall quarter charges only because you register each quarter, those charges go on each quarter. And then you're, if you're living in the dorms or doing a meal plan, it's, it's a quarterly charge. So yes, each quarter you would have to sign up. Awesome. The next question is, do parents have their own Western Online account or do we access info through our student's account? You access it through your student's account. So that is, we talked a little earlier about the authorized payer. You wanna make sure that your student is setting you up as an authorized payer that gives you your own login information, but you would then use that login information to get on and see what the charges are for your student. Um, and make a payment or um, see the statements that way. So authorize payer, get your student to sign you up on their Western account online. Awesome. The next question is, where can we find this presentation later if it's being recorded and posted? Sure, we will have it right on our homepage. Um, the website is in the chat there, Taylor shared that. Um, what you'll do is just, find the, the payment plan one and click on it and it'll take you to the video. We should have it posted later this week. Give us a few days to get that up. We'll have captions on there as well. Perfect. The next question is, can I sign up for auto enrollment of the payment plan or how do you notify us when it's time to sign up? That's a good question. Um, we are looking at sending out kind of a blast email to students to let them know that it's available. We haven't ha gotten that established yet. This is actually, the payment plan was new as of last year. So last year was kind of our, our first go at it. Um, we had a lot of people participate. We hope to get a lot more participate for this upcoming academic year. But just so you are aware, we will post the open enrollment period right on our website. So you can always kind of set a reminder to look at that. We should have those dates listed a month before the quarters begin. If you also wanna follow us through any of our social media outlets, we, we will be plugging the payment plan that way as well. Perfect. So if you sign up for um, your payment plan, you pay nine installments? If you, you sign up each quarter, so I look at it just one quarter at a time. For fall, you're going to be paying three installments. And then if you sign up for the winter payment plan, three installments. And if you sign up for the spring, it's three installments. So yes, technically that's nine installments, but you need to make sure that you're registering each quarter for that payment plan. Just want to make sure that that's clear. The enrollment for fall is not good for the academic year. It's good for that quarter only. We don't have your charges posted for the other quarters until the quarter, until closer to when the quarter starts. The next question is, why is the 52914 days? Uh, we put that on there because most of our 529 plans, unfortunately, um, come to us through check paper check in the mail. So we want to make sure that you are requesting those funds well in advance. There are a few plans that have it set up where you can go right onto the Western account online, select 529 plan. Oh, there's my plan. And you can make a direct payment. We are trying to get more 529 plans to participate in that. But um, until we do really the, the, the majority of them unfortunately come to us by a paper check. We have explained to um, students and families that 
there is that option to kind of make a withdrawal and you can do an e-check, but you want to make sure that you're working with your, your plan provider to ensure that you're doing everything correctly. All your um, tax guidelines are being followed. We're not tax professionals here at the SBO, so we want to make sure that you're directing those questions elsewhere. But we do, um, you know, if you want to <clears throat> make a payment through e-check and then you can make that withdrawal directly from your, your uh, 529 plan, that would be an option for you. Awesome. The next question is, if my 529 runs out, how would I change to my bank account? So I'm not sure if I understand that question completely, but if, are you talking about a new payment method on the Western account online? Um, Can you read it one more time to me? Sorry. Okay. Oh yeah. The person said yes. Okay. Um, what, so yeah, I think you have control over how you want to make that payment method. If you want to change it, even if you save an account number, you can always you know, change it to something else through that Western account online. You have control over that. And if you are trying to make any changes and have questions about it, don't hesitate to contact us. We can try and help walk you through through that. Awesome. So another question is, I'm on a wait list for a class and won't find out if I get in if I get in until after classes start. What happens if I sign up for the payment plan and then get the class? My tuition will go up. How do I add the new amount or can I even do that? Yes. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, one of the earlier slides, definitely that's something that could happen. Okay, so I wanna go over a couple things. Um, so tuition, if, if you're adjusting your schedule and that adjustment results in a change to your charges, meaning that it goes up, what you're gonna receive is kind of a notice to acknowledge those additional charges and you can agree to adjust your future installments to include those charges. You don't have to, you can leave them separate, but then that, that change to your, to your balance would be kind of subject to other deadlines. Um, so just keep that in mind, but you have to actively agree to, to change the future installments to include those those additional charges to your your plan. Okay, and we have just a few more questions. So the next question is, do the kids use e-checks to buy books? Do, say that again, I'm sorry. Um, do students use e-checks to buy their books? You can, you can choose to either, you know, pay directly with the bookstore or you can have those charges um, applied to your Western account online. That's up to you. I don't know, Taylor, if you want to provide any more information as a student who uses the bookstore, um, what you, what you elect to do with those charges. Yeah. So like you kind of said already, um, you can have financial aid, um, with the authorization to apply financial aid funds, um, added to your account to pay for those books. Um, and then you can just go ahead and if you want, you can just go ahead and pay, um, right then and there at the bookstore. I think those are the only two options, really. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I think it's just important to understand, like, um, timing. So let's say your financial aid disperses the Friday before classes start, then you make a charge to the bookstore um, a few days later. Well, your financial aid has already applied. So that even though you've said financial aid can pay for my books, if it's already applied to your account, you might need to make a separate payment for that bookstore charge. And that's no big deal. It's just to be aware that you should probably be reviewing your Western account online, yep. at the very least on a monthly basis. Um, my recommendation is set a reminder for a couple of days prior to the late fee deadline. Um, again, payment plans kind of run on their own timeline, but if you're not doing a payment plan, that late fee deadline is the, the 15th of the month. So. Um, just make it a habit to look at your Western account online, especially if you know you're adjusting your class schedule, you're adjusting your meal plan, you're charging books. Those things create differences to your balance. And so you want to be aware of what's happening. Okay. Um, can parents sign up to get the same emails from the SBL that the students get? So yeah, as an authorized payer, 
you will receive the notification when the statement's available. Um, so that's that is one key piece and, and a, an advantage of signing up as an authorized, getting your student to sign you up as an authorized pair. All righty. And our last question is, where can I get more information about paying online, making payments, not the payment plan? Making payments, not the payment plan. Sure. Our website uh, at the sbo.ww.edu, we've got a section that says how and where to pay. That'll give you more details about um, your different payment method methods. Perfect. Awesome. And I think those are all the questions that we have so far. Yeah, I think we answered all of them. All right. Um, great. I appreciate you joining us this morning for our presentation on Western's payment plan. Again, this video will be viewable on our website towards the end of this week, hopefully. Um, and if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at our email address. That's probably the best way to reach us. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Bye.